I like to use Arches watercolor paper for the base. It's 300 GCM hot press and I prefer hot press because it's more smoother so you allow your materials to have more texture. You would also need some other paper materials and I suggest some acetate paper which is quite shiny to give that shiny effect. Some tracing paper. It's a bit more cloudy but still see-through so you can get that nice hazy kind of aesthetic. And any other textured paper that you like. I have some rice paper which is quite nice because it gives a grainy texture and a foam board to create your layering. And also you would need a cutting mat to cut out your shapes and your illustration figures. Now that we've covered the papers, let's go into our dry media. So as you can see, I have some pencils here. For my basic pencil, the graphite, I like to use a 2B. And the reason why I use a 2B is because it's quite in the middle of the spectrum from very hard to soft. So you get a nice um, texture and finish. And I like to have a darker pencil to get that hazy, grainy, soft, pastel-y texture. And of course, you can move on to the colors. So I have these color pencils here, and these are my all-time favorite, and it's the Polychromos pencil by Faber and Castell. So now let's move on to the wet media. For my wet mediums, I have my gouache, and I like to use gouache because it's like a matte paint, so it's not that shiny. And if you add water to it, it becomes watercolor, so it's quite versatile. And also, if you mess up, you can always use the white to add layers to cover up your mess up, which is quite nice. And then we have some inks here. And ink is a really cool texture that you can get with mixing a few drops of ink and lots of water. And here I have some watercolor that I use for mostly everything, just to get that variations of color. And it's really easy to use because you can almost rub things out with water. So with your wet media, we have to have brushes. And so I tried to use at least three different levels of brushes. Here I have my very thin size 00 brush. And then I have the medium brush, which you can get a bit thicker lines. And I have my bigger sable brush just to get a nice wash across the artwork. I have a fan brush here that you can get quite nice lines widespread like a fan. And I keep a loose brush here just to get off dirty materials on the drawing to clean it up. Now that we went over the dry media and the wet media, I want to show you some materials that I use for textures. Here is some masking tape that I use to create texture on garments or draw on them to create my own prints to then tape on the garments. And here I have some empty tapes which I quite like because they already come prepared with their own prints so you can add them as an extra on top. And you would need some tape to actually glue your pieces together. So I have this archival tape, which is acid free and it's quite good for conservation. So it doesn't eat into your drawings over time. In case you need something more than the tape, I have the glue here to supplement the things that you need to put together. And also you would need a scissor and a cutting knife to cut out your shapes and textures. So I have a metallic ruler here that helps me cut out thicker materials. And I also have a see-through ruler here to help me gauge out what I'm cutting. So these are the materials that I tend to use, but feel free to substitute anything that you want to try out. It doesn't have to be the brand names that I use, but feel free to explore and choose what works for you. 